Megalodon went extinct 2.6 million years ago, but our fascination with the largest shark that ever lived is timeless. Meet the largest predator in vertebrate history. Megalodon was the biggest shark that ever lived, but just how big was it? Paleontologists aren't quite sure, but most agree that Megalodon grew to at least 52 feet. A study published in 2013 suggests a maximum length of 59 feet roughly three times as long as the longest great white. People used to think Megalodon teeth were dragon tongues, before they were recognized as shark's teeth. Megalodon teeth were mistakenly identified as rocks that had fallen from the moon, or as the petrified tongues of dragons and giant serpents. In 1666, while studying the teeth of great white sharks, naturalist Nicolaus Steno made the realization that these tongue stones were actually shark's teeth. His biggest discovery was that these teeth had kept their form, but not their composition, that they'd been turned into rock over a very long period of time. In other words, they had become fossils. Since then, scientists have found hundreds of fossilized megalodon teeth and spinal segments known as centra. Because a shark's skeleton is made up of cartilage, which dissolves quickly in ocean water, these are the only megalodon remains that have survived over millions of years. Fossil shark's teeth can tell us a surprising amount of information about prehistoric sharks, from where they lived to what they ate to how large they were. Shark's teeth are the most abundant type of shark fossil, in part because sharks shed thousands throughout their lifetime, and in part because they fossilize comparatively easily. Megalodon's attack focused on the tough bony portions of its prey, such as the shoulders, front flippers, rib cage, and upper spine which great whites tend to avoid, its teeth were large and robuster and its jaws were massive. While great whites prefer to hit their victims from below and then retreat while they bleed out, Megalodon clamped down and crushed its victims' bones and the delicate organs harbored within. An ancient whale, its rib cage pulverized and its heart and lungs ruptured from the powerful bite, would die quickly from its injuries. But this wasn't Megalodon's only attack strategy. Fossil evidence shows a variety of hunting techniques, from ripping apart and biting off fins in order to immobilize prey, to attacking small whales from below, perhaps similarly to the Polaris attacks displayed by the Great Whites of South Africa. When it wasn't showing down on whales, Megalodon also fed on seals, sea lions, giant sea turtles, sea cows, dolphins, porpoises, and other large creatures before going extinct. Megalodon babies were as big as the biggest great whites. In 2009, a breeding ground for Megalodon was discovered off the coast of Panama. To date, it's only the second of its kind ever found. Led by a team at the University of Florida in Gainesville, experts collected fossils and compared them against other megalodon teeth that had been recovered. It was concluded that the teeth belonged almost exclusively to juvenile sharks. By studying the juvenile teeth, experts were able to determine that juvenile megalodon were about 20 feet long, similar in size to the largest great white sharks ever recorded. Megalodon wasn't the only giant prehistoric shark. It may have evolved from a totus. A totus lived around 40 to 60 million years ago and was close to 30 feet in length. While that's about 20 feet smaller than Megalodon, it's still one and a half times bigger than the biggest great white shark on record. A totus teeth have been found all over the world, including in parts of Africa, Europe, Asia and North America which suggests that a totus lived globally. Similar to the way experts have studied Megalodon, they use a totus teeth to anticipate the size of the rest of the creature. The teeth that have been found are around 4 inches long, which means a totus must have been approximately 30 feet long. A totus likely fed on prehistoric whales, fish and smaller sharks, just like Megalodon would eventually do millions of years later.